Hello and welcome to Lamplighter. This is day number 30. Today we go into the reading of how the priests are going to be ordained to serve in the tabernacle. We've read all the details of the building of the tabernacle, and now the detail in our reading continues today because now we're learning about the priests themselves, Aaron and his sons. They have to wear special clothing that's been designated to make them holy. They have to offer special sacrifices to designate them as being holy as well in the sight of God, who is himself a holy God. I hope you notice in the reading today how important holiness is. Everything is about being consecrated before God. Everything is about being set apart from. And by the way, that's what the word holy means. Set apart from the world. Set apart from sin. Set apart in a unique way to stand before God as his created people. It's a relationship God has desired with his people from the very beginning. And it's important to notice, even though we can get bogged down in some of the details, that everything done, whether it be making a garment for the priest to wear, whether it be offering a specific sacrifice for the priest, everything is about making them holy in the sight of God. This is very important to God. I want to read a segment from page 133 in a paragraph about the middle of the page. So I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar and will consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests. Then I will dwell among the Israelites and be their God. There's that word dwell among that we talked about earlier. That's the word tabernacle. God says when we do all of this consecration of people and things, then I will dwell among my people as a holy God, and I will be their God. Let's read on in that same paragraph. They will know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of Egypt so that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. Twice in that one sentence, God says, I want them to know that I am the Lord their God. When we were reading about the plagues in Egypt, remember God said to Moses, the reason for these plagues is I want Pharaoh and his officials and all of Egypt, and yes, even the Israelites to know that I am the Lord God. And God makes that very plain to his people. Now he wants to reaffirm that he is the Lord their God who has always desired to dwell among them. But in order for him to dwell among them, they must be consecrated and they must be holy. Now, there's something else kind of interesting at the bottom of page 133 in our reading today under the heading of census offering. The Lord said to Moses, when you take a census of the Israelites to count them, each one must pay the Lord's ransom for his life at the time he is counted. This suggests that every human life has value. Every human life is worth something. And when Moses counted the people, he was instructed to receive an offering from each of them that was, in a sense, a recognition of the value of each individual life. Life has always been valuable to God. And notice that word ransom, because the same word will be used many years later when Jesus, the Son of God, ultimately pays the ransom for you and for me, for our sins, washing them away by his blood. Now, all of the building of the tabernacle, as we've seen, has been very detailed in its description. All of the making of the garments for the priests to wear have been very detailed, as we have seen even in our reading today. And the question then becomes, what if the people can't do this? It seems like some very specific talent is needed. And that's why in today's reading, God says, you know what? I'm not asking you to do anything you're not capable of doing. I have given certain people among you, and by the way, he even names some of them. I've given them specific talent so that they can do these things that I'm asking you to do. They are skilled craftsmen. 
But God wants to reiterate the fact that their skill comes from him. He has given them the ability to do exactly what he asks them to do. By the way, God continues to give you and me the ability to do the things he asks us to do. Right at the end of our reading today, we see that God puts all of the commands down for Moses on tablets of stone, and these tablets of stone, we're told, are inscribed with the finger of God. Imagine that, inscribed by the finger of God. The only other time we've read that phrase, the finger of God, has been at plague number three, when the magicians of Egypt see dust turned into gnats. They say, this is the finger of God. It represents power. It represents authority. It represents control. Now, as we close today, I want to read a longer section. I know you've read this for yourself, but this is so important. I want you to especially pay attention to the gray commentary section on page 135 at the end of today's reading. I want us to read it together because it is vitally important that you see this connection to everything that's about to happen as we continue our journey throughout the Old Testament and even into the New Testament. These detailed instructions indicate how strongly God feels about the purity of his people, the constancy of their worship, the need for sacrifice and offerings, and the value of all that is dedicated to God's service. The plans also indicate the distance which must be kept between deity and humanity, yet the closeness of God to those who would worship him. And once again, the remarkable detail makes a strong statement about how specifically God is involved in the lives of his people and what great expectations he has for precise obedience to whatever commands he gives. But the tabernacle is more than just a temporary place for the Israelites to worship God. It foreshadows a more permanent temple to be built in future years, and don't miss this, and later a spiritual temple to be known as the church. Therefore, its symbolism is rich indeed. The mercy seat above the ark, for example, suggests the grace which will be given to cover all law. The blood of the animal sacrifice looks forward to a future time when the Messiah himself will be slain as the Lamb of God. The veil which separates man from God will one day be torn apart by this spiritual high priest who will enter that holiest of holies, heaven itself, and there atone for the sins of all mankind. And all who believe in God and obey the laws of his co covenant will become as priests, wearing the priestly garments of righteous character and offering up their very lives to God's service. I wanted to reiterate that reading because I want you to see that none of this is an accident. None of this is coincidental. Everything we're reading, even when the reading is challenging and difficult, is pointing to a bigger picture. The story is about God. Isn't it great to be a lamplighter? His word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I hope you have a blessed day.